low-ranking protagonist, the feeling of being famous and recognized as probably the worst one among everyone, only to rise to glory and obliterate opponents because that certain protagonist turns out to be secretly the strongest being anyone has seen. So today's video will be looking at 10 low-ranking protagonists who are actually overpowered. If you're new around here, then please make sure that you're subscribed to the channel with the notification bell icon turned on to stay up to date with the latest anime news and recommendations right at your doorstep. Now, without keeping you all waiting, let us begin with the video. Starting things off with an anime series called Spirit Chronicles, this anime has all the reused recycled isekai assets that you've pretty much seen before, but has more of a connection to the previous world. It's got the usual Kirito lookalike, powerful protagonist who destroys nobles and enemies and grab him himself a harem. Nothing special, but to be honest, I'd be lying if I said I didn't like it because I sure did. I've seen so many isekai at this point, many being the same, and this one, to be honest, is really no exception. I'm used to this stuff, and so of course, I'll like it. No no matter how it turns out. It's a good action series, good story and animation, and it's made by TMS Entertainment, which is a really good studio with so many great anime produced. If anything, I'd actually highly advise checking the series out and see it for yourselves. <laughs> This here is a Chinese animation series and a bit of a unique one as I've watched quite recently. QI Refining for 3000 years tells the story of an immortal being who is completely stuck and remained a bachelor for 3000 years. Basically, he is a complete rookie and is mostly due to his rare physique. He can't really die as he witnessed all of his friends and master actually ascend into the afterlife while he cheated death. Quite the interesting protagonist if I have to say. It's a show where we follow this protagonist try his best to grow from his current stage and ascend to greater heights through his experiences that he will face down the line. This anime is made by Falk Films and the creators of, you know, Full Time Magister and well, if you guys enjoyed that show then I'm sure that you will with their latest production. First of all, before we get anywhere, if you're looking for an ambitious story, then you should probably watch something else. But if you just want an addictive story, then you should probably check out The Silver Guardian. The plot of this anime is simply complicated. The first season of Gin no Guardian is something like an introduction to the overall world and build up. It's like a tutorial in game and not really more. Silver Guardian tells the story of a poor and orphaned young high school student who also happens to be a pro gamer since he basically spends all his free time just gaming. Inside his favorite video game, he actually meets a girl who turns out to be his in real life crush. Oh, how lucky is he? And saves her because, well, he's pretty much overpowered, and from there the adventure begins. But in the end, I actually. I quite like the simplistic approach towards Gin no Guardian, and despite its flaws, I am willing to encourage others to give this one a try. <laughs> Hero Return is probably one of my favorite Chinese animation series because it's just pretty badass if I must say. <laughs> There's only one great hero who ever managed to accomplish the impossible, something no other hero can after, you know, following his footsteps. His name is Zero and the hero he is, which is what everyone looked up to when it came to saving the world, when one day he completely disappeared without a trace for a few years. It comes to a big surprise actually when he comes back and nobody remembers him at all and that's an epic start of a zero to hero journey where the greatest hero who ever lived makes a name for him himself once again. A lot of people may say that this anime is quite generic or maybe even average, which, you know, they aren't wrong, but if you do like overpowered protagonists who kick ass every time when a fight is near, then you will love this anime. <laughs> It 
has indeed been a very long time since I've watched Akamiga Kill, one of the more popular series back in the days produced by Studio White Fox in the year 2014. Set in a fantasy world, Akamiga Kill begins with a talented but rather naive swordsman named Tatsumi, arriving in the Empire capital as city and dreaming of making a name for himself as a hero everyone can look up to, and he ends up joining a squad called Night Raid and start of the path towards assassinating those who, you know, they deem to be responsible for plaguing the capital with corruption. It's quite easy to say that Akamiga Kill is a show that might, you know, just not be suitable for everyone. I don't say this on a graphic content perspective, but rather with the whole premise and what it tries to do. In fact, the premise is very solid and stays true to itself throughout the entire show. <laughs> Even though the protagonist was just a little bit dull and his relationship with others only shined the most when it was revolved around the main story, at the end of the day, I really enjoyed watching a Kamiga kill. <laughs> The Hidden Dungeon Only I Can Enter is a show that embraces itself really well in knowing that it is very generic, but it does it extremely well to the point where it is very entertaining to watch. Now don't be so heavily fooled by its title, the anime is not just all about dungeons, but more on the side of being extremely harem related. Now the protagonist Noir finds a hidden dungeon and finds a mysterious woman trapped where she offered him powers in exchange of needing a kiss from a girl to gain power and yeah, I guess that sums up the entire show to be honest. He gets pretty overpowered thanks to, you know, this and can do pretty much anything with this power. It's not the greatest anime but I really, I'm not gonna lie, I had a great time watching it. <laughs> <gasps> Up next on the list is a Chinese animation series made by a relatively brand new studio recently that aired in July, and it's called War God System I'm Counting On You. I'm actually quite impressed by this series, even though it may start a little bit confusing, but it does get really better. <laughs> The protagonist Anlin wants to learn magic in which he gets transported to a magic school by someone and when it came to level testing, he was at the bottom score. Of course, there's always a twist when it comes to a series like this because he received a war god system which allow him to cultivate to a higher level, making him a lot more stronger than he currently is. <laughs> Now, if this is your first Chinese anime, which you are planning to watch, I would actually highly advise to check out something else, as this might be a little bit too advanced or a little bit too hard. Still though, I really enjoy this and I would highly recommend it. <laughs> Down Machi is a very popular fantasy focused series about an epic dungeon exploration. Cool story and also a weak to strong protagonist. Bell Cranel, as many describe him at first, is a weakling unable to fight or defend himself, but has a rare case of being just able to completely level up way more faster than others, making him completely powerful down the line. Now what I really like about this is though, how it manages to present the dungeon as the environment. It actually feels really threatening and ominous the deeper you get inside. Now have you ever ended up in a zone that is way too difficult for your character's level, you know, by playing an RPG video game? Yeah, it's got that exact same feeling. Unforgiving, ruthless, but full of adventure. It goes to show that with proper execution, a time-tested concept is still perfectly viable and as a result, it provides an anime that will always leave you with a smile on your face. <laughs> Personally, in my opinion, the Sengoku time period, or what I like to call it the Samurai Era, is one of my favorite places an anime can be in, as this series created by Studio Dean in 2019, I found this to be a very cool series. <laughs> the 
This is sadly also quite underrated. The animation is pretty good, the characters also feel nice, plot's very intriguing as well, sticks to the historical events and great way to get a fresh overlook on the Nobunaga timeline. The tale of Nobunaga, as always, has been quite the popular one, written in so many different ways, but always encompassing one key detail. <laughs> His tact for, you know, conquest and the prowess on the battlefield, but this show embodies this detail so flawlessly. Keep in mind though, it might not be for everyone, but surely it might be worth a try. <laughs> And now finally to end things off with this list I'm recommending to you all is Hinomaru Zumo which is a sports series focusing on the world of sumo wrestling. This is actually a really good anime that is very underrated but it tells the story of a protagonist who is quite short and wishes to become a wrestler but is very underestimated by the other much bigger, stronger, bulkier looking guys and don't believe he can really make it anywhere. Of course, like many shonen shows, a lot of protagonists really wish to reach greater heights and for this one, it's pretty much the same same exact thing since the protagonist wants to achieve the best ranking in the sumo league. This is created by Studio Gonzo in 2018 and it has so much action. Fat guys wearing diapers and sweating like pigs, overweight equals to overpowered, but who cares if you can't really bend down to tie your own shoelaces when you can just walk through walls like a complete monster. Trust me on this one, you guys really should check this anime out. Hey. You just made it to the end of the list and witnessed 10 low-ranking protagonists who are actually overpowered. If I've managed to leave any anime in particular that you thought would be a great issue on the list, then please let me know in the comment section down below as I'd love to hear your very new opinion or just comment down below what you thought about the video in general as I'd always appreciate the feedback. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll be seeing you all in the next one.